so first we're going to talk about is our uh, research property. We applied for a TLP last year and got approved by the ministry and the school board. Um, when we put the proposal together, we kind of talked about, like, here's all the things we want to do in our classrooms. Let's kind of throw all into the proposal. So we just up all the buzzwords we could possibly think of in education and dump them in there. Uh, so like trying to think off the air, like actually looking at them, we talked about classroom design. Differentiated instruction. Uh, collaboration. Um, personalization of learning. Yeah, there's AER, so looking at observation and conversation in the classroom, triangulation of data, and just keep it. If you name a buzzword, it was probably in our proposal. <laughs> Uh, that being said, we, in 20 minutes here, we have not nearly enough time to talk about all the things we are trying to do. So uh, what we are going to focus on, it's kind of a, I say at the core of our research project, is this idea of collaboration. Um, it's kind of a history way to start off, actually, going back to, I would say, like, maybe January of last year, getting towards the first semester. Uh, JD fired me an email with a situation about a student. The student hadn't done a whole lot of summer work in class, like she had some observations and conversations made, but she wasn't really sure how to handle his final mark, and so she gave me this very long email. It's kind of, here's the whole scenario, and it was kind of asked, like, how would you handle the situation? So I thought about it for a while, actually, and had some response back, but at the end of the email, I kind of said to her, you know what, it's without knowing the kid at all, without having been in your classroom, it's really, really hard for me to get, kind of give any advice on this. And this kind of led to an interesting philosophical conversation for us about that idea of what I kind of call teacher island. Uh, you go into your classroom and then you really just you in there all the time. Um, maybe like once you have an administration over 20 minutes every five years to kind of see what you're doing, and then you're back to being your own for their five or maybe seven or eight years, depending on how things play out. Um, so, and there was, it led to an interesting conversation talking about like how cool it would be to in a teacher's classroom. So another piece I actually should mention in the first slide there for this project was when we put the, the proposal for it, we asked for some release time to look at what it's like to have two teachers in the classroom together. So we got approved, I would say, in like March of last year, and then we kind of felt that means that it was starting. So we decided to get going with it. We realized after the fact it was supposed to start until September this year. Um, but we had really supported them, we gave some uh, release time. So for about a month and a half last year, um, once a week, we start off with a digital collaboration between our classes too and our students. Uh, but once a week, I would go over to Cameron for the morning and be in Jamie's studio class with her. And then that same week, she'd come to Heights for a morning once a week and be in my TV class. We had our kids collaborating digitally a lot in that space too. Um, and else want to talk? Well, it led to some really interesting observations in that way um, because I had a group of boys in my class. Um, and so they would ask me, when's Mr. Brodsky coming? And then I had a group of uh, girls in my class, when's Mr. Brodsky coming? <laughs> 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 And so um, what it led to was that, um, and if I had a big ego and was offended by that, no, it was that they wanted to connect with him for whatever reason, those kids wanted to talk to him. And so it worked out really well because when they were there, or when he was there, they had access to him and his ideas were very different people. So having that opportunity for students to talk and have access to two teachers is phenomenal for them. And when we started the project, we really focused on like, how it would affect the students that have to teach in the classroom. But one of my biggest takeaways from it um, is the teacher learning. Uh, I, I love learning myself. I'm a huge teacher, but I love learning because it's the highest form of learning. Um, so I try to go to conferences a few times a year and I come to things like this. And it's great to sit down and listen to a teacher talk with you in their classroom. Um, but it pales in comparison to actually sitting in a teacher's classroom, being in a classroom with them, seeing how they actually handle their classrooms, how they organize their lessons, how they deal with situations in class, how they deliver what they're looking to in their classroom. It's phenomenal learning. I don't think as that my learning on this is like we don't do that nearly enough as teachers. It's just like take a prep here to try and do some uh, release time to your school, just go and be in a classroom with another teacher and see how they do things. It's phenomenal learning. So uh, like on my end, um, I feel like I was pretty good at the front of the classroom, um, but watching Jamie and I actually seeing her in her classroom, she's fantastic and makes she's really conscious in the effort of moving around having small conversations with her kid as we're working through things and having those one-on-one -on -one conversations, which I realized was a weakness for me in my classroom, something I wasn't doing nearly enough of. And I was seeing so many light bulbs, I was just sitting back and watching her talk to students and seeing the light bulbs go off and then I realized that's something that needs to do way more than my practice. And conversely, Andrew's really good in front of the class. Um, I'm a bit more on the introverted side. Uh, he's far more animated with the kids. And so uh, in sitting back and looking at what he was doing, I was thinking, really trying to deconstruct, what is he doing in front of the class that I don't do? And so then it's thinking about, okay, how can I take and leverage what he does and incorporate that into my own practice? And so for that piece, it was so fascinating to watch. Um, so Collaboration is a key for us. We're going to start off talking about the teacher collaboration, which didn't end up being a focus for at the beginning, but kind of has become a really big learning piece for us. Uh, so one thing, uh, again, last year and also this year we're being at here right now is we've matched up our two English classes. The first semester we've got two P second semester where we're matched up. Um, kind of looking at this, but uh, the whole plan is really interesting. How do we design our plans? 
Uh, we use a tool called Planboard. Anyone here using Planboard for lesson planning? A couple hands up really quickly. Give you a quick example of what it is. Uh, essentially, it's a digital lesson book, so you can go to a cloud base. They have apps for Android or iPhone or iPad uh, on a computer too. So this is Jamie, as you can see in the week view. She's got her 2D classes here that we're sharing, uh, her four year English classes down here. Um, and so in this space, so I pop one open here. Um, for example, this. Um, you guys kind of share what you do in the class. Uh, you can use it just as a teacher to organize yourself for your lessons, but uh, you can also get a unique link or embed code for every single lesson. So we both post it to our classroom websites for students to access, for parents to access. Um, and a more relatively new feature from they have what's called resources. You can create your own group, so it can be as a school, as a department with teachers, and share your plans back and forth. Um, so we kind of, like, Jerry will take just like, hey, who's got the lesson plan for the next three days and stuff like that, and we'll kind of just trade off from each other. Uh, we'll talk about what we want to do in our classrooms, but one person designs it, and I can just jump in mine and click, click add and put it into that day. Um, and that kind of takes care of our plan that way, too. It's really quite a time saver. But at the same time, you have to be really accountable for what you're doing in your class. Like, if you're on our in our department, we typically say everybody has to do the same assessment. How you get there is your own problem. But for us now, it's that no. How? What are we doing day to day to day? How and how are we going to do that? And what are we going to do? And so it's, it's a, I don't see, the collaboration is at a lot different level. Sure. Uh, the co-teaching aspect then of being each other's class improvement, it's opened up a lot of interesting doors. Um, one thing talking to the office recent conversations, we were trying to actually have more of those in our class and look at different ways to document those two and track them. Um, and we found having just for one or two days a week, having two teachers in there, we could actually have some classes in that here on the or next at schools so only an hour long periods, but we could get through them sometimes into our classes and actually between the two of us almost have like, a two minute conversation with those every kid in the class. Uh, and the feedback from our students has been really great at it and that they really appreciate that space of having a teacher be able to sit down and just talk about where they're at in their learning process, what their personalized issues are, and kind of having some coaching through that as well. But then at the same time, it gives you the opportunity to sit down uh, with a small group. So uh, we just finished a collaborate, collaborative project that we'll show you um, coming up. We'll show you some examples from it. But what we did was that every group, and we had both of our classes doing the same project. Some of the students were actually working across class. Um, and so we sat down with every single group. We recorded, we used our iPads, we recorded video. One of us reduced it. I introduced iPad recorded video, I took notes, and we documented our um, conversations and observations that way. And then uh, their finished uh, project, they ended up sharing in front of the class, and we recorded the video, and we recorded their presentations as well to have that evidence. Yeah, so it's great. We kind of, in the early in the process, we got them to kind of talk what they're thinking, share what they plan to go with the project, what they saw as their strengths and weaknesses, uh, coach through that process. But we also the opportunity to go back and look at those students and say, okay, here's the video recording of it, here's the observation we did of them in the classroom taking this. I uh, just snapping some pictures in the classroom too of what they're doing in the process. And it was also interesting from a very uh, metacognitive standpoint uh, when they shared their uh, projects, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Um, we record those well too, and the question we had after them was really focused on just kind of like what went well, what didn't go well. Uh, having those open conversations from the class was really interesting too, and more focused on the cloud piece, like how did this project work for you guys? What were your strengths as a group? Where did you run some pain points? How did you get through them? Uh, and looking at and discussing really how does collaboration work, not just saying this is something that didn't go well, did not go well, essentially. And the other thing too is that they have access to two teachers for feedback, and so with having a lot more conversations in the class, um, you know, as English teachers, we are writing comments constantly on student work, but at the same time now we're having so many more face-to-face -face conversations where you can say uh, to this, the student a couple days later, hey, do you remember what we talked about the other day? And that the student might say to you, might say to me, hey, but I talked about that with Mr. Bronski and he suggested this, and then I have a different idea. So they're, at, they're getting feedback from two different sources and it gives them information. We won't spend too much time on this, but from a cloud marketing standpoint, too, is just kind of being on the same page with our teacher, uh, having a common assessment where you can sit down and talk with that and pull up some student work and be like, how, how would you look at this? How do you handle this? Where do you see this being? Yeah, we've had some good conversations there. For sure. Uh, student collaboration, I don't know if you guys can read this, but like, I, this was my experience as a student in high school and university of uh, how collaboration worked. I hate it as a student, so if you can't read it, uh, if you're familiar with hang on, you know, I've got, does 99% of the work has no idea what's going on the whole time, <laughs> says he's going to help, but he's not, and then disappears at the very beginning and doesn't show up until the very end. Um, and that was really how I felt about collaboration, thinking back on my experience as a high school student and also in university as well, but it wasn't a positive experience for me. And when we're kind of looking at teachers now and talking about collaboration for students in our classes, and we're supposed to be assessing, and I can speak to my own work here too, um, it comes with work our time, and I feel like I have a good handle on my students, but I'm, to be told, in the past I was not doing very much to one document that has something to actually point to and say, this is why you're a good or a satisfactory collaboration. 
And also, I wasn't doing a lot of my class to formally work with my students to improve those skills. I say, like, if you look at the job industry right now, um, a lot of the tech employees, a lot of big companies are saying, our grads are very intelligent, they have this content knowledge, but they don't, they struggle with collaboration, and that's the real world. You get put into a team, you're supposed to work collaboratively, and that's something that a lot of companies are saying, this is a weak point for our grads right now. And we very explicitly teach collaboration, and so we use ourselves as role models for them, and we talk, we're, as right on the first day of class, we talk about that we're doing a project together, we don't know how it's going to go, but we're going to take a risk and see what happens. We also talk about the idea that collaboration isn't, this is what we're going to do, you take this part, you take this part, and you take this part, and then we'll put it all together, and if you bump and boo, we have a project. We talk about that, we ask them to have conversations with each other about what are your strengths, what are your interests and then talk about, where, honestly, where are your areas for growth? And so then, you, then they have to sit there and talk about, um, how do I leverage that you are strong in this area and I am not so strong in that area? How can I grow in those areas? And so we ask them to really spend some time thinking about their own strengths and areas for growth, but then having that conversation with each other about how do we build up each other and improve uh, in general. And then we've seen a lot of great, I mean, just as it was kind of for us, and like looking at each other's strengths and trying to learn from each other, we've seen the same thing happen with other students too. When they're having those conversations, is looking to other people in class who might be stronger in areas and having them go to those people and kind of get leverage those tools in the classroom as well. Um, another thing we want to highlight here, uh, that we've kind of part of research projects and been like very interesting for us, is looking at the idea of student course and choice. Um, I feel very fortunate as an English teacher that our curriculum is very much skills based, um, and in the credits. <laughs> not as relevant for how you get there, but even like work with other teachers talking in the space. Um, a lot of our curriculum is actually really good in my mind. It's very open-ended. Um, you have lots of different ways for students to demonstrate. So one thing that we looked about uh, with this assignment we're going to share with a little bit of you guys here was uh, we just finished doing uh, Shakespeare in our English classes. And so we gave our students the choice of either studying Macbeth or Midsummer's Dream. We covered both in the class of the group, but the students had the choice that they were aware of what's going on in both, or doing deeper focus on one of the two. Uh, and then further formal some assessment for this, we were looking at actually three specific strands from the uh, the expectations pretty much. So they had to create a media product and the media strand. Uh, they had to show the reading comprehension through uh, looking at different elements and analysis of the text. Uh, and then they had to do a presentation and show several communication skills. So we're coming big expectations from the curriculum, but we opened up to the students and said, we don't hear, we actually pulled up this specific expectation, like here, this is what we're assessing you guys on, but it's up to you for how you want to demonstrate this to us. It really doesn't matter. Uh, we've done a lot of formal work with you. Uh, we've done different things to learn through this process in the class, but how you want to demonstrate your learning to us is really up to you. So we gave them a lot of options there. One thing that was interesting in that space, some of our kids loved that idea and jumped that immediately and like, they took off running, the engagement was fantastic, and some other kids hated that idea. They're just like, no, you need to formally teach me everything I need to know and then let me figure it out and then I'll jump through the hoops and then I get a good mark. And I don't, I'm not anti that process, that's good to have that, but I think it's also important to kind of give both dynamics of open up your students, like, hey, you've got some freedom here, use your creativity, think of ways you can do that, and again, a lot of conversation with us and that help them through that process too, I would say. And when you have that opportunity, um, those work periods, we had so much engagement. I, like, there were kids doing things all over the room. It was like chaos, but it was awesome because we had no behavior issues. We had kids who typically may not be so engaged in Shakespeare. They were all in. Um, like I had a group of kids, actually they were from both of our classes. They, were, they had strapped a GoPro to their head because they wanted to do Hamlet from a first person kind of shooter idea. And I'm like, you know, running through the classroom with a GoPro on her head. And so it was hilarious, but at the same time, they had a very detailed script of what, an idea of what they were trying to portray to you. So again, in summary for this, I'm going to show you just an example of this. Like we actually pulled out this specific curriculum application, said this is what we're assessing you guys on. Um, you need to reflect on the learning you've done the past four weeks, and then think about how you want to demonstrate that to us. But it was very open to how they got there. Um, they weren't perfect from the beginning, but we sat down with each group on the first day and had a document that conversation recorded, talking about how they plan to go through that process and kind of course. Uh, so one example was uh, we had a group of boys from uh, Jamie's class who decided to go with iMessage and Instagram. Uh, so what they did is they created characters through iMessage and decided to cover through the play and look at character development uh, throughout the play and Macbeth, uh, through text conversations back and forth and bring the movies and things like that. And then they documented and shared that through Instagram shots as well. And this group, tip, they were, I would say, some of my lesser engaged uh, students. Uh, we, they had this idea, they rolled with it, and they were, but then when they got up to explain it in front of the class, you got to really see it, how deep the analysis. So they were very picky about which uh, profile picture they had, the very specific reasons as to why they think that had Thanksgiving hat. 
Um, and then, so from there, we got to see these, this deep thinking that they had that we wouldn't maybe necessarily see if they had expressed it in another way. Um, another example was a group used Twitter with Storify. So they created Twitter accounts for each of their characters for um, Instagram and Stream. Uh, they focused on the four Athenians, so like kind of love dynamics, and they looked at finding modern media to represent what they thought the characters were dealing through by covering through the entire play and looking at the character development. Uh, so they're playing things like memes and emoji and uh, different images to cover down, like start to finish, what actually happened in the play and how the characters developed through it. What was fascinating about this one is that this is a group of girls from Anthony's class, and two of the girls read an Instagram Extreme, and the third girl read like that. And so then she was very honest in her presentation saying, I really didn't know what was happening at some points in this Instagram Extreme, so I had to rely on them to fill me in. So they had to demonstrate their character or their understanding of the play by sharing it with her because and they were teaching her throughout that. But then she talked about how she was able to uh, add in, based on what they said, she was able to come up with some interesting memes, gifts, that kind of thing that demonstrated the idea. With the students that chose to go into the video route as well, kind of show their learning, kind of look, leveraging their skills in that space. Um, and what they want to highlight too, like for us, we kind of threw them into the fire with this and said, like, it wasn't how they were great the products, but it was something we directed for us. And you guys have the options to do this. So uh, neither of us are strong video editors. Uh, the kids who want to try to engage in that space and touch in that space, they chose to jump in. So uh, this group of girls uh, wanted to do, they said Macbeth, they decided to make a movie trailer to kind of show the key parts of the play in their mind. So we'll put the whole thing, we'll share a little bit with you guys here. Uh, last one we want to show you here too, uh, this is another film. Uh, 
this group was looking at Midsummer Night's Dream. They focused on uh, three of the union lovers, and the way they chose to kind of show their learning was they tried to use The Office, the TV show, uh, to kind of match it up. So they broke it into two parts. They took the actual text, the Shakespearean text and language, and reenacted what they thought were the key parts of the play. But then from the office standpoint, said, okay, we'll follow these characters around as things are happening. But then they also step back and like that interview side where they pull one character off the side, and then they kind of said, this is how we're going to show a deeper understanding of character development and have the characters speak to what's going through their mind at different points in the play. So it's a really, really great way for them to show their learning. With the modern twist of being high school. Yeah, and so when they, they're doing the, mod, the traditional Shakespearean language, they're acting it out, and then when they're going to the office side, they're jumping more into a more modern standpoint for it. So I'll show some of you guys as well. Anyways, I think we're about at time. I think we can pull back in the room. So thank you for joining us. Okay.